here in the studio from Cranmore and Mount Washington Valley Ski Team. So good morning to you all. We have Dave, we have Leanne Smith, and we have Skip Bartlett. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us on. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. And besides that, you're roasting. So we'll try to keep you from passing out here, Dave. But uh, tell me about what's going on in, in ski life. Um, well, you know, we're right in the meat of our ski season. Um, we're really excited about Leanne's success on the World Cup. She had a second at Mel Desire in December and just had a third at Cortina, Italy. Absolutely, Last yes. I just downhill. saw the, uh, the picture of you taking the podium. That must have been pretty exciting, Leanne. Tell me a little bit about that. It was exciting mm -hmm. it, to have a podium earlier in the season and to follow it up again was really important for me. And the snow was perfect, and that's one of my favorite venues on the World Cup. So it? It, it was an incredible feeling, and I hope that it keeps falling in that direction. And you it proved just to your father that you weren't a one-hit one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> is that the rumor that's going around? That's what he was saying. super important. <laughs> now, Leanne, on that day, did you just feel it like, a, was it one of those things like everything was just clicking on all cylinders or were you nervous the whole time? Yeah, in downhill, you have a couple training runs, so you, you know what you need to do. It's just a matter of doing it or not. And I felt good and skiing has been going well for me technically and I just knew that I had to send it because it was at such an even playing field and the snow was so good and the other girls are top notch and I knew that I had to really send it if I wanted to be anywhere near the top so it ended up working out really well for me that day I was really aggressive and I'm obviously really excited about it. Now good ski conditions for you is probably different than most being a downhill racer what does that entail is that just like super slick super fast? It can be yeah. it depends on the weather I mean we had a training run canceled in Cortina mm. because it had snowed probably like a half a meter there mm -hmm. so we missed our first training run so Friday was the first one and we had to make it count because the next day is the race and some days it's icy, bumpy, and you can feel that you're going 70, 80 miles an hour. And then some days it's like a highway, smooth. It feels like you're going 50 or 40. It's just really depends on the venue, the weather, and you know you hope that you're on it that day, no matter what right. the conditions are. Now, do you find that there's a lot of distractions as well, and you kind of have to get into that race mode? Is it hard to do that when you're traveling all around the world? Yeah, definitely. You just can't let outside variables mess with your game or. Um, get, distract you on right. race day, but yeah, sometimes you, you know you get have a wrong interaction with somebody in the right. morning, it just or throws you off mentally. Yeah, or yeah. maybe you're tired. You just sure. have to you just have to stay with it. Right. We're right. we're good at what we do, and we know the right things that we need on race day, and hopefully it goes your way. And if it doesn't, you learn from it. Good. And, it was remarkable too, where she just podium. She tore ACL there four years ago on that. Thing. Oh my gosh! So pretty cool. So for was her that to, like kind of? in the back? No, because it was such a fluke thing. Mm. It just kind of happened. I got a little back and caught an edge and sure. that was that. Yeah. So it wasn't anything like traumatizing or yeah. to where I'm like, oh man, I'm getting you to that section stronger of the than course. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I would be so oh like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's really great to, to come back a few years Good. later and to have a result like that, especially with how much I like that venue and yeah. the Dolomites are amazing and it's a nice it's town. What an so. experience. Now yeah. let's talk about uh, because this gentleman sitting beside you, Skip, you guys go way back. You guys grew up <laughs> here in the valley over at Cranmore, skiing at Cranmore. Now, Skip, what are you, you're at Cranmore now. Yep. What do you do? I'm a uh, program director at the Cranmore race team. Nice. And what's nice about that is I grew up there skiing and then moved on to MWV and then I worked with Dave for a couple of years and then got the chance to, you know, work at Cranmore. And I just thought it was cool because a lot of the the uh, coaches that work under me were my coaches growing up, so it's really cool and That's nice. Awesome. She's on the other foot. Yeah, yeah she's it's, on it's the other a little foot. different. Well, what's nice about having you there, though, now you've formed this great partnership again with the ski team. Um, and, and Dave, what does that allow you guys to do? Um, well, it's been great. And just to, to backtrack a little bit, there was a, there was an age change with the FIS, where the FIS age went from 15 to 16, and they've created this new age group. It's, they've gone to come up with a soccer model, so it's called U16. So okay. It's kids, what, 14, 15, 16. Um, so uh, we were approached by Skip and Cranmore a year ago to um, partner in with them mm. and, and uh, help coach that age group. At, based out of Cranmore, but we train at all the, the Valley Ski Areas. We use Wildcat out of Tash and Cranmore. Sure. Um, but we get tremendous support from Cranmore on training space and, and racing space. Right. Now, these two grew up at Cranmore doing a race team at Cranmore. What is it about Cranmore that produced such stellar skiers? 
job. They just, you know, they have it together. The the ch children's program, everything that uh, going up through the system, it works and good coaching. Right. Because so I think for the, the general public. The other thing public, is ESSC. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, the ESSC is yeah. just phenomenal program getting young kids on skis here in the Valley. But I think a lot of the perception, and it's correct, in the Valley of Cranmore, it's a great family fun, you know, Cranapalooza, fireworks, but you guys have a ripping race team going on. It's a lot, of, a lot of character there. Yeah, Cranmore. absolutely. You love yeah, Cranmore. A lot of history, and a lot of tradition. And yeah. With the Mount Washington Valley Ski Team having huge successes. That was great. And, you know, these guys, when they came through, I mean, we had a, a, a big group of really talented athletes at the, at the time that pushed each other. I mean, Lee and Skip, the Tarberry Brothers, Ace, mm -hmm. who was on the ski team recently, um, pushed each other. and. Um, these guys started coming to our ski camps at Mount Hood and Copper oh, when they were I don't know, yeah. 11 or 12. You had those nice Coke bottle lens glasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's wonderful. Know, we had the opportunity to go to camp during the summer, which is definitely important in yes, development, yeah. racing development and stuff. So Now, as far as what you do at Mount Hood in the summertime, how does that differ from what you would do here in the winter? Um, at that time of the year, it, it really gives the athletes a chance to really focus on basics and fundamentals without the, the distraction of the race season or school or mm -hmm. homework and all that. So they can really immerse themselves in, in just really breaking skiing down mm -hmm. into the basics and, and working on that and just getting those repetitions over and over again. And then that, that uh, progresses into the copper camp in November mm -hmm. um, where they can take what the, the, the foundation they laid in July or August and then build on that in the fall and then start building speed. That's just like living the life so. though, isn't it? That's a wonderful thing that you guys have been able to do. So uh, congratulations on your success. Now, uh, all this takes money. It takes a lot of money to get kids on skis. ESSC is a great program getting it started. Now the ski team, you guys have fundraisers continually to help everybody. Yeah, two thirds of our, our, our budget is from fundraising or hosting yeah. races. We've got our uh, annual comedy night coming up okay. February 16th, which is at the Grand Summit Hotel with uh, Bob Barley, not the Rastafarian. Right. Well, that would, yeah, that would be a little. Weird um, who's absolutely here. hilarious. Yeah. So people that are familiar with him, I mean, he's been on national TV, and he's he's great. This will be his third year um, with us, and we've got um, there's a live auction, there's a cocktail party, appetizers, entertainment yeah. games. Uh, tickets are fifty dollars a person. Okay. And people can um, sign up either contact the ski team office, which is three five six. 7627mwvskiteam.com. They can also okay. go online at mwvst Bob Marley dot brown paper tickets dot com. Jeez, that's a mouthful that there. <laughs> that's a big one. They're not going to remember, remember that, that, but yeah, right. No, yeah, we um, have the actual tickets are also up. available at Stan and Dan's. Okay, one, good. One fit. That's easy. Um, or again, you can also get them at Wonderful. the hotel. And exactly the money is at a raise. What what do that, they do? That goes to the support of the athletes on our ski team, um, and that's you know that helped Leanne and yeah. Skip out when they were athletes coming through our program. Um, that that money contributed to her success that she's doing now. So well, that's fencing. fantastic. Fencing, <laughs> fencing, <Games. laughs> defense. Oh, demon. Oh, fencing. That's what I'm like. Fencing. I thought I meant like on. Oh, now I'm I like, just, what? It, it's you know, <laughs> speeds have increased, and yeah, you have to put absolutely. up a lot of protective safety net. We we do a lot of racing at Bear Peak and at Cranmore, so we're constantly doing the defense work. Yeah, got to keep Did them it safe while they're going so fast. Everybody so said it was cold. But you, hope you're, you hope you're sick that day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you all. Did we get all the information that you guys needed to get out there? Yeah, Leanne, so congratulations so. on thank your you. continued She's success. She's got world championships coming up in Schladming, yeah. Austria in a few weeks. Yeah, so. are we going to be able to tune in, see you on TV again? I hope so. Awesome. <laughs> the coverage is different now, but... If you go online, search, you'll find something. All right, well, Google good luck. It. Well, what do you say to a skier on, on race day? Get him. Like, what's the, he's shiny side up in motorsports, I know. Full hammer. Full <laughs> hammer then. All right, Leanne, full hammer. Thank you. And uh, Skip, thanks so much for joining us Thank and you. continue success for the Cranmore race team yep. over there, as well as your partnership with the Mount Washington Valley Ski Team as well. Dave, as always, a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having us, Kelly. Uh, no problem, Appreciate anytime. And again, the comedy is coming up on that February 16th, Grand Summit Hotel with Bob Marley. Help support our kids, do great things with the ski team, and have a great time doing it. $50, get you a ticket, a great comedy night. Is there anything, like you said, a raffle, all that stuff? There's a, there a live auction, there's a silent auction, there's some really cool trips to um, South Africa, Ooh. the islands, there's some really, really right, cool sign stuff, me up. ski equipment. Awesome, thanks again. All right, folks, we're gonna take a quick break. We have a couple minutes to do some stuff when we come back and wrap the show.